we have arrived at the crucial part of our work, our, of our way. We are seeking some equations that constitute a scientific body that can allow us describing the continuum medium behavior. So it's time to review what we have achieved so far. What are the equations that we have made available for describing the continuum mechanics and see if these equations are a complete system of equations in order that it can be solved by any method, maybe analytical, maybe, maybe uh, numerical, etc. So let's do a review on all that. What equations have, you, have we obtained so far? So we obtained from the conservation of mass principle the continuity equation, which is written in that way. I use the notation rho dot, that means material derivative, right? Material derivative. Then from the linear momentum equations, we obtain a vector equation. So three equations, in fact, which are the one that has force, the body forces plus the counterpart of the traction forces, the tractions on the interior, divergence of sigma, equal mass times acceleration, rate of velocity. And we have three, three equations from that. Then we did the, we played the game, the game of the angular momentum balance and we obtained, curiously enough, the symmetry of the stress tensor. So that symmetry in right is in fact is a set of three equations. The one that there is that the sigma one one sigma one two equals sigma two one, sigma one three equals sigma three one, sigma two three equals sigma three one. So three more equations. Then we move to the first principle of thermodynamics and then we uh, studied the energy balance and we arrived at this equation. The changing the, the rate per unit of mass of the internal energy has a counterpart which is the stress work sigma times d and another part that comes from the uh, heat power okay and this is one single equation and then we have seen that there are two more inequalities so they cannot be counted as equations they are just to say if these equations are applicable or not to something that has um, some meaning in a, our universe, which is the equations coming out from the second law of thermodynamics, this equation, which said that this has to be greater than zero for any uh, process, it's extremely greater than zero, it's uh, irreversible, and if it's equal to zero, it's reversible, which is the Clausius-Planck inequality, that's the name, Clausius and Planck, the famous Planck of the theory of quantum, maybe it sounds to you, he was also developing that. And then that one which says that heat flow inequality. There are two restrictions. And that's it. We don't have anything, anything else so far. So let's sum up. We have one equation, plus three, four, plus three, seven, plus one, eight. Eight equations, okay? So, with these eight equations, even if they are partial differential equations, well, some of them are partial differential equations. This is derivative with respect to time, derivative with respect to space. This is algebraic, this is algebraic, but these other are partial differential. In general, they are equations. So with these nine, with these nine equations, we can solve nine unknowns. Let's see how many unknowns are um, involved in these equations. The density, one variable. The velocity, three variables. The stresses, nine variables. Well, I say nine because I consider in the equations the symmetry as three equations. Otherwise, if I take out the symmetry of the equations, then here I would have only the symmetry of the stresses equation. I would have only six variables. But now I'm counting seriously. So it's one, three, nine equations in the stresses. The specific internal energy is one. The heat flux is another equation, three. The absolute temperature is one, uh, in, uh, unknown, sorry, one. And the specific entropy, entropy is one. So I have 19 unknowns and only, sorry, and only eight 
partial differential equations. So I'm just half the way. I need 11 more equations before I'm able, not involving additional variables, before I'm able, I'm, 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 I'm able to say that I have a system which, with as many equations as unknowns. Okay, so there is work to do. Look, these, I don't count these by, as equations because they are restrictions. They are not equations. Okay? So, that is the job that is going to be done, done so far. Look that all these equations are valid for any continuum medium, are general equations. So, can be applied to any, any continuum medium. The rest, the, the, the ones that you are going to derive in the future, are a specific for a specific types of continuum medium. That is why in the next chapters we'll talk about elastic bodies, about plastic bodies, about fluid bodies. So then we are specifying equations for these specific types of continuum media. And that's the difference of, from what we have done so far and what we are going to do uh, uh, in next, in next uh, days. So we are going to derive, I'm anticipating what we are going to do, some relations relating the stresses with, at the end of the day, velocities. But in fact, since the, from the velocities we can obtain displacements, and from displacements we can obtain strains, at the end of the day will be the relation of the stresses with the strains that will depend on velocities. And then with respect to temperatures, and sometimes in order to represent the behavior of some bodies, we have just to introduce some additional unknowns. How many of these equations there will be? Well, as many as stresses. How many stresses are there? There are six. So we introduce these equations, and these are very important equations. They, we are calling them constitutive equations. Constitutive equations. Typically, when I hear uh, constitutive equations, I imagine a relation that provides me stresses in terms of the strains. But in a more, a more general concept, context, we can say that provide stresses in terms of displacements of velocities, temperatures, and some additional variables, which are called internal variables. We will derive an additional equation, which is called the entropy constitutive equation. Again, the same equation like that, the same family of equations, but now returning the stresses as a function of the velocity, temperature, and internal variables. Look, that one, I've told many, many times, look, the, the heat flux uh, vector is an unknown, but we are going to produce a law that provides that. This is what is called the thermal constitutive equation. Same equation that provides the, how much, or how, what is the value of the, the heat flow uh, conductive flow tensor, flux tensor, in terms of the temperature. This is the famous Fourier's law. Have you ever heard about the Fourier's law? Is that law that says that the conductive flow flux is equal to minus one property, which is the conductivity of the material, times the gradient of the, the temperature field. Okay? So now, we are going to postulate that equation through the Fourier's, the Fourier's law. The conductive flux is equal minus the conductivity times the grain of temperature. And then we are going to formulate also what we call state equations that typically uh, are equations that algebraic equations relating the state of, of the variables. For instance, one equation that prov provides the internal energy as a function of density, velocity, temperature, and internal variables, and as, num as, as many equations of those to solve these additional internal variables that relate temperature, density, and internal variables. So finally, summing all that, we have six equations, one equation, three equations, one plus p, one here there are p, p is the number of internal variables that we added here in the constitutive equations. So finally, we have the 19 plus P, PDS, summing this and those. We have 
19 equation, 19 unknowns. Here we have 19 minus plus p unknowns. And however, if we are able to formulate all these equations, sorry, all these equations, we will have 19 plus p partial differential equations. So finally, finally, if we do this job and we obtain all these equations, we'll have a system, large system, that's true, of as many equations as unknown. That system can be solved by methods, if we are able to, to solve by analytical methods or by numerical methods. Okay? But theoretically, it can be solved. Okay? So that's the job to be done. But let me tell you that in many cases, we as engineers are not interested in all these variables. In all these variables, for instance, the entropy, the internal energy, the, the, so there are a number of these variables. In our daily job, is not what uh, affected us. So in that sense, we are going to try to separate the equations in two different sets. The sets that involve mechanical variables and the set that involve uh, thermal variables. So if we consider the continuity equations, the Cauchy motion equation, force equal mass times acceleration, and the constitutive equations, okay, now we have a set of 1 plus 3 plus 6, 10 equations, okay? 10 equations, and now imagine that if we, are, if we are considering that the temperature is not an unknown here, is not an unknown. That's the main assumption. Imagine that we know that the temperature is something that we know in advance. We know in advance the temperature. Now let's count the number of unknowns we have in this first group of equations. We have the density, which is one unknown, the stresses, which are, now I count six stresses because of the symmetry, one plus six, seven, and what else? One, density, six, ah, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the displacements of the velocities, which are three more. So look, just if we can assume that the temperature doesn't appear in the conservation of mass, which never appears, the linear momentum, which never appears in the constitutive equations, if we can make reasonably the assumption that the temperature doesn't appear in the constitutive, the mechanical constitutive equations, so then we can just isolate a much smaller system. One system with 10 unknowns and 10 equations. That is what we call the mechanical part of the problem. The mechanical part of the problem. And the rest of the equations are the thermal part of the problem. Many times we as engineers are just interested in these equations and in these variables. And the only assumption that you have to do in order, in order to solve the mechanical problem uncoupled from the thermal problem is just that the temperature doesn't appear at the constitutive equation. We'll see that there are a number of cases in which we can assume that we know the temperature. We know the data, the temperature as a data. So it's not an unknown, and then we can solve the problem. Okay? So that is the situation in the cases in which the temperature doesn't appear here. We have a system of 10 equations and 10 unknowns. And then, just in case, if we were aerospatial engineers, for instance, or if we were, I mean, chemical engineers, maybe we would be interested in the rest of the problem. But in many cases, this is not, not our case. So we're going to be concerned about the conservation of mass. We already have it. The linear momentum balance, we already have, have it. And now we are going to derive these six additional equations. That is our task in the rest of the, of the, of the course. To derive these constitutive equations relating typically stresses and strains for different types of materials. Now we are calling off, we are calling uh, of material, we are dealing with materials. We call an elastic material, we'll call an, a, a plastic material, we could call a viscoelastic material, 
we could also, we are talking about fluid materials, and that is what the, the dust that is coming in the future.